Right, I figure we'll do a little ladder safety video. How to set up a ladder to reach a roof like this. This is a 6 and 12 pitch, so look at one over across the street. Same basic uh, roof line on that house over there. So you see that's a 6 and 12 pitch. So it means uh, for every uh, 12, what is it? I'm trying to think. 12, I don't know, it's 45 degrees. So that's a 6 and 12 pitch. My mind wasn't going there this morning on how to figure that out, but I've done it many times. So this is 6 and 12. Uh, if you set a ladder up on that roof, you're at high risk to uh, having that ladder kick out. You know, possibility what you could do is you could use a 16 foot ladder on a roof here to reach that little peak up there. Or you could do this. But uh, what we do, is, and this is again, this is against you know a lot of your safety rules and whatever to be safe we put weight on the bottom so one person will stand on that bottom rung when the other guy's up there working on the top so but going up there without a person on the bottom is a high risk let's look at it so if you know your ladder safety rule you know typically it's 25 percent so your ladder should be 25 percent so that it should be 25 percent uh from your height so usually if you kind of look here these ladder rungs have flat spots on them the newer ladders your old ladders used to be just round those are terrible to stand on stand on one of those for a few hours unless you have boots on you get real tired your feet just get hurting it's not good the flat ones are much better in fact i won't use any of those old ones i've gotten rid of them all i've had to a few a few of those many over the years but um the flat spot usually is level, so you kind of get an idea of where you have your ladder set. If your flat spots aren't level, then usually you're not in the right place. 25%. So whenever it's more than that, you need to have weight on the bottom. Make sure again, your ladder shoes are good. If your rubber's gone on those shoes, throw the ladder away. Buy a new ladder. I never replace ladder shoes because usually what happens is the aluminum's already flexed out and uh, it's time to go. So we're going up here in a little bit to go paint some stuff. Uh, we've been doing this house here, pretty good size house. I'll show you what we're doing. Got a lot of trim here. Let's take a look at the front. Yeah, we'll be painting these doors. We always paint them. Forgot my GoPro camera, so we won't be doing any video live, but take a look at this, how dirty that was. This house has a little like a patio cover in the front. I don't know for decoration or whatever I don't like it but then they have these two columns up here look at the size of that column right there look at the size of that a 20 foot tall column I'm trying to do all the trim on that it's gonna take a little while you got all the trim on the front here all the way around up in there it's got three-tier roof we painted the stucco and the eaves yesterday uh, and when you do that all in one day, you really can't mask the stucco because it's, it's still wet, especially this time of year. If you see here, there's a lot of fog. So rather than go home early, we went ahead and painted it and shielded it uh, the way I do it. Uh, the guys wanted to mask it, and I said, well, we can't mask it. Let's just shield it. So now we're going to go through with a brush and tighten it all, all that up under there. You see that little bit of stucco showing there? No, nah, that's not acceptable. We go through here with a brush and clean all that up make it look like it was all masked it doesn't matter it can be done either way you do, you just thin your paint down like that little blowout right there you're gonna mask you're gonna go ahead and touch that up start doing some of the trim here take down the rest of the windows while we're up there one shot go up uh, finish up pull off your masking as you do your trim so you don't go up there and waste time to go do stuff twice See, I'll be up there doing those that trim up there, cutting that in, bringing that in, doing my two brushes. I'll have a brush in the white, brush in the trim color, finish it all out as I go. Double pop outs in the back. This house, this house took two guys spraying uh, to do the stucco and the eaves all one day. We ran out of paint, so we got about a gallon to do right now. He's finishing that up, and then we're gonna start trimming this house out. Uh, it's I, I think it's close to 3,000 square feet pretty good sized house so has two fireplaces one here one way over there 
So it's a pretty good size. Titan 4040i, that's our other machine. If I didn't show that one in the videos, yeah, I showed the old XCs, but up here on the roof, when you bid a house like this, I always think, I know this is gonna take me a lot more time because we got a six and 12 pitch. It's harder to work on. It's a little slower trying to get up underneath those eaves. You're just at the wrong height. It takes a lot more time. This one has this front that's very high over the roof that you can't get to unless you ladder it up there. And those take a bit more time than ones that don't have that. So when you're bidding stuff, always add for that. All right, so knocking out a little fascia board, I'll show you a little trick that I've been doing for years. And I, I, you know, a lot of these tricks I've been doing and I just don't even think about showing them because I, it's just, I don't even think about it. But I got my caulking right next to my handle. So right next to the handle of my of my bucket, I always put whatever patch I'm using. So if I'm doing an interior, the exterior is the best patch is caulking, right? So some of you guys are patching all your holes in advance, right? You go through and you patch every hole, then you go out and paint. And that takes a lot of time because you're going up on the ladder twice. I don't do it that way. I do it like this here. So it looks like this was an address number here. Paint would probably fill these, but if I get a bigger one, then I always have my patch on the side of the bucket. It's hard to do this. I, I do it a little nicer when I'm doing it with my right hand, but I got my phone in my right hand. So I'm just making this video for you guys. So if there's a knot or something like that, I got my I got my caulking right on the side of my bucket. Now, you put it right near your handle because then you're not going to bump into it. You know, if it's near the handle, where the handle is on your bucket, you're not going to bump into it. You're not going to move it off. So on the interior, I'll put Crawford Spackle on here because uh, I'm doing walls. If I'm touching up walls and going through and cutting in. So if I'm cutting in my ceilings on, a, on the interior, I will have Crawford Spackle right here. All right. And then if I see a hole in the wall while I'm cutting in, I'll just touch it up too. So I always have some patch on the side of my bucket in this little spot right here to fix stuff with as I go. So that way you don't stop. You know, it saves you from that separate trip stopping going to get the caulking gun you see a couple holes now you just already have it so while you're up there you catch it all all right anyway that's a little trick for you today hopefully it helps you talk to you in the next video please like share and subscribe that's how we do it here well, i'm actually standing today so travis is up there at the top this is a 32 foot ladder so it could even go up higher but we're got it working kind of low because we don't want to mark up the wall too much because we're actually going to paint we didn't paint that whole section we forgot to paint it we ran out of paint yesterday so looks like we're going to finish this house today you guys watch the other video on it or other parts of the video so he's going to go ahead and caulk everything he caulked Prime painted all at the same time. Just get it all done. Set the ladder once. This thing's very heavy. I don't know how much this ladder weighs. It's a very heavy hat ladder. It's it's a uh, blue top, so it's I think 300 pound capability on it. So it's it's heavy. That's how we do these. It's about the safest way without renting a lift. Like I said, we've done it before and put ladders on there, but it really isn't. At a 6 and 12, it's not a very good idea. Ready? I'm ready to move. So I figured I'd film this while we're hanging out. I'm just sitting here, so might as well do something with my time. Get you guys up a little closer. Cock in the under edge, cock the peak, cock the cracks. 
Everything looking good. Nobody's going to go up in this thing for a long time, probably. Be a long time before somebody else goes up here. I don't know. I think this house was built in the 90s, and I think this is the first time it's been painted. And that's just too long. So then we'll just cut and roll the siding with nice thick paint. I want to make sure we get enough paint on there. We'll get our bucket up there and get painted. Give that a second to set up. So these are the faces that I did. I, I always roll first and go back and then brush afterwards. And then my last, I touch it, you know, well, I roll it first then I go back with the brush, cut it in, cut in everything. And I take my brush and dip it a bunch of times and just take it just a few inches at a time, put a nice heavy, heavy coat on and look how nice they look. They're still wet. Of course, because we have bad weather today. You can see over there, you can see, uh, I can't get the thing. Yeah, if the, you can see there, we got some bad weather, but I did these several hours ago, so. And they're gonna be on there nice and heavy, and it was, they were very, very dirty, so. All right, Travis is getting that done up there. Bring it back in. It's all been sanded. Went through and uh, spot primed a couple of things. I'm just getting the last final coat on there. And this is 100% acrylic cell priming paint. So it's meant to go over this kind of rough sawn wood without primer. I always uh, use 100% acrylic cell priming flat. Over here we see this next door neighbor put enamel on their rough sawn wood. I, I don't like that at all. I don't like the look of it. I don't like... Uh, it seals up the wood and if water gets behind it, it doesn't have any place to go and ends up popping off in sheets At some point if you have any roof leaks or something All right, so we're getting it all done here. Just about on the last little bit It's gonna have to move the ladder one more time to get that little area over there if you can even see it I don't know if You can see right there under the eave. We did not mask the eaves. We just went ahead and sprayed and got paint down on there and just go through and touch it up. Don't always have to mask them if you don't have time or you don't have the labor to do it. It's much easier just sometimes to spray it down and get it on the wood or get it on there a little bit. Use a shield and go back and touch it up with a brush. So it comes down to the roof line and we slide the ladder over. Ready? One more time. So hang on, okay, and on the bottom, going up, finish it up, looking good, high peak's going to be done in just a minute, we'll move on to some other stuff on the house. Alright, we got another one done, real quick little job, I just came out to help the guys that got behind, so we just put the screws to it today finished up all this trim and we did not wrap anything it's, there's just too much here to wrap it all it was never wrapped to begin with on all the windows and all that but that's the way he bid it the way the customer wanted it you don't wrap everything if they don't want to pay you to do it just make it all look as best you can make it look good and straight nice and covered Always used to have those little options out there. If the price is a little too much and they like you, they want you to do the job, figure out how to make it work for them. And then uh, do your best job you can do for the price. You know, that way you always work and got happy people, give you more referrals. That's the game. All right, I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Please like, share, and subscribe. Hope you enjoyed this little video. Talk to you later.